Hi, thanks for watching Nova History Remembered. The women from both sides of the Civil War were often just as passionate about the war as the men. Here are two stories of young women from Loudoun County on both sides of the war and what they did to help their cause. The area about five miles north of Leesburg was called the Lost Corner or Goresville and many of the landowners and farmers had come across the river from Maryland to settle and farm. They supported the Confederacy and many owned slaves. Four women of that area decided to help the Confederate cavalry operating in the area by traveling to Maryland for supplies on their behalf. This photo shows Colonel Elijah E. White, who commanded the 35th Battalion Cavalry for the Confederate Army, in the center holding a sword and with his officers around him. The women in the image are likely to be the four who traveled to Maryland, although no surviving copies of this photograph identifies them. The woman sitting by White with her hand on his arm is probably his wife, Elizabeth. The two women standing behind them have remarkably similar features and could be the Ball sisters. That would make the fourth woman seated at the left, Annie Hempstone. Temple Hall was owned by another Maryland transplant, Henry Ball, and his two daughters, Katie and Betty, were with Elizabeth White on the trip to Maryland. Mrs. White was living at Temple Hall at the time her husband was serving in the Confederate Army. The fourth woman, Annie Hempstone, lived across the road to the north of Temple Hall, and after the war she married a soldier in White's command. These ladies all had a strong love for the Confederacy and a devout hatred of the U.S. government, all had close relatives in the Confederate Army. On the morning of July 5, 1864, Mrs. White and the other women crossed the Potomac River at White's Ford. Their purpose was to collect clothing and boots in Maryland and transport the supplies back to Virginia for use by the Confederate Army. White's Ford was on the river by Elijah and Elizabeth White's farm and had been used earlier in the war as the crossing for most of the Confederate troops moving towards Antietam. It's doubtful that the women waded the river. There are references to a White's Ferry at the ford, probably with a rowboat service, and that's likely how the women crossed. This is a different location than today's White's Ferry, which was called Conrad's Ferry during the war. At the time the four women crossed the Potomac River into Maryland at the ford by the White's farm, the Union Army pickets had been withdrawn and the crossing was easy. Their destination was Mrs. White's parents' home, Mount Carmel, about a mile into Maryland from the Potomac River. They arrived there and Miss Hempstone rode with Mrs. White's brother to a neighbor's house where they collected boots and cloth for the Confederate Army. The four women spent the night in Maryland and departed the next day. They tied the boots to their hoop skirts and wound the cloth and calico in and out until they were burdened with the weight. Unfortunately, the guards had returned to the ford, making a crossing impossible. They returned to Dickerson, Maryland, where they spent the previous night and hid the boots and other items in the house walls. All four were arrested the next day by the Union Army for suspicion of aiding the Confederacy. The women were imprisoned first in a local house and then transferred to the old Capitol prison in Washington, D.C. That building had served as a private school, a boarding house, and from 1815 to 1819 had been the temporary Capitol building of the United States. The Union Army converted it into a prison for Confederate captives. Major DeWitt C. Thompson of the 2nd Massachusetts Cavalry, who wrote the arrest report, commented that Mrs. White has a mother on this side, which no doubt was some temptation for her to come over, and she has a small child, which I hope will cause her to be well treated and provided for. But in the case of the other young ladies, there's nothing to be said in their favor. Their coming over was a glaring piece of boldness and impudence. It was intended for defiance and injury to our government. The latter three women may have been less than civil to Major Thompson. He wrote in his report that he was aware at the time he arrested the women that Mosby's force was encamped near the other side and previously and subsequently operated on this side above the ford. 
Confederate Cavalry Commander John S. Mosby was dining with the Balls the day the four women were making their way into Maryland, and his men were nearby. It was there that Mosby got word of Union cavalry activity in Leesburg. He mobilized his men and followed the 2nd Massachusetts Cavalry skirmishing with them at Mount Zion Church near Aldi on July 6th. Henry Ball of Temple Hall, father to Katie and Betty Ball, was a friend of Mosby's and well known as a sympathizer to the Confederate cause, having been imprisoned by the federal government early in the war. Some reports suggested also that he fought as a civilian at the Battle of Ball's Bluff. Major Thompson was part of the 2nd Massachusetts Cavalry and was assigned to the Maryland shore guarding Potomac River crossings from Virginia, a duty that he hated when other officers he entered the war with were fighting in battles. His disposition was likely not the best when he encountered the Virginia women. When the four women were transported to Old Capitol Prison in Washington, they were confined on charges of being spies and were threatened with hanging. But since no evidence of spying could be found, they were paroled and given a pass to return home after three weeks. They traveled back to Dickerson, Maryland, picked up their goods from Mrs. White's mother's home, hung the contraband under their hoop skirts again, and proceeded to Edwards Ferry, which they deemed the safest place to cross the river into Leesburg. Later in life, Annie Hempstone wrote in an article about their adventure that as she was being lifted out of the wagon at the ferry by an acquaintance, she whispered, Lift me down carefully, or my hoops may tilt and show the boots and materials. They crossed the river in a skiff, and Annie was obliged to stand because of the heavy load of boots dangling from the inside of her hoop skirt. The women reached home safely. A few days later, the men of Colonel White's battalion heard of their return and visited Temple Hall. There the women distributed the supplies they had collected and smuggled across the river. After being released from prison, these four women were likely considered heroines of the Confederacy, and this photo might have been taken to commemorate their bravery. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more stories about Northern Virginia history, please subscribe to Nova History Remembered on YouTube. And you can also follow us on Facebook under that same name.